Fox. This uh, is a show and tell video. There are a, a number of people in, in my life struggling right now and th that was the inspiration for this this video and, and even if they don't watch this video I thought there might be others that could benefit from some relaxation and maybe these life hacks one of my hobbies is studying the history of the Oregon and California immigrant trail and in general immigration to and settlement of the uh, far west of the U.S., so you know, specifically California and Oregon, pretty much. I'm not a hardcore historian of it, but I'm interested in it. I've built uh, quite a collection of books, detailed maps, and guides. This is one example. It's a book called Overland. It has uh, wonderful stories and pictures for points all along the trail from the Midwest all the way to destinations in Oregon and California. One day, I'll do a show and tell of this book. And uh, a ramble related to it. But it's too much for today. So that's a little preview. Today I'm going to show this book on Wyoming. It's not uh, strictly speaking a book on the California and Oregon Trail but it's somewhat related since the trail runs through Wyoming and significant parts of the trail are preserved relatively untouched in Wyoming and it's a picturesque place and this book has quite a few nice pictures so this book will be the backdrop for today's ramble as I flip through pages. I really don't know how long this video will be. It will be what it is and go where it goes. Much like our lives. You gotta just let it happen. We uh, rented a car when we visited Wyoming. I think this, this book is basically a uh, vacation guide put out by the state. 
I think it's about 15 years old, so something like that. So I don't know how, many, how much things have changed since then. But in fact, we rented an SUV because if you're going to travel in Wyoming, you're going to drive on dirt roads. It's a beautiful country, though, and well worth the trip. This picture reminds me of something from, from our trip to Wyoming. And I don't know if it's still true, but when we were there, traveling around the state, every little town had a rodeo, a local rodeo, they did on the, every weekend, at least in the summertime. And I thought that was super cool. I mean, just little rodeos every weekend, and local, the locals participating in a little rodeo. And I will say one thing that stands out from that is I remember at one of the, we, we stopped at a lot of the small towns and did the, attended their little rodeo. And I will say one time, <laughs> one place really stands out because there was a young man, I mean, he's, I want to say teenager, but it might have been, might have been early 20s. And he was full on dressed 1980s punk rocker and uh, had everything going on, you know. And uh, then at one point, he threw on uh, shaps and a cowboy hat and rode a bucking bronc. And I thought that was just fantastic. I thought that was pretty cool. One of the, the themes of today's video is uh, the serenity prayer. You, you've probably heard it. But before I recite it, <laughs> something I get a kick of, out of is that there's, there's actually controversy about the prayer itself. Specifically about origins of it. The irony just tickles me where you have people exerting energy, arguing about something they cannot change, or the thing they're arguing about tells us not to spend energy on things we cannot change. And I'm not gonna claim any deep authority on that subject, But as best I understand it, it's a 20th century thing. Written by a theologian named Reinhold Niebuhr, or Niebuhr, I'm not sure of the pronunciation. Anyway, it uh, subsequently was adopted and embraced by 12-step programs like uh, AA. And, and you could say the 12-step programs really did the marketing for the prayer, making it uh, so well-known as it is today. But in fact, there were many similar statements in the past with more or less uh, similar sentiments. Going all the way back to the Greek Stoics. But here's how the prayer goes. I'll paraphrase it. Grant me the courage to change what I can. The serenity to accept what I cannot change, and the uh, wisdom to know the difference. I thought that photo might make a nice uh, basis for like a uh, watercolor or something, maybe try to copy that.
Medicine Bow, Gorge Country. So going on with the, the theme of, of today's video, there's there's an old story. And there's um, tons of different versions of it, many, many versions. But I'll, I'll tell a, a short version of it. And it's uh, a miller and his son and their donkey. And they decide they, they want to sell. The father decides he wants to sell this donkey at market. So they're, they're walking this donkey to market. And they, they figure they'll get a better price if they keep the donkey in good shape. So they're walking on their way to market. And at some point they run across uh, some travelers. And they start mocking and uh, laughing at him. And saying, what, what's going on here? You've got a donkey. Why, why don't you put the boy on the donkey? Let him ride. So the father does. And the boy hops up on the donkey. Or is put there by his father. And they travel on. And before long they meet some other travelers. And the travelers laugh and say, what's going on here? Why, why is the boy riding the donkey when the old, poor old man should be riding the donkey? Get off and let the old man ride the donkey. And so the old man rides the donkey and the boy walks. And they travel some more and uh, run into more travelers. And those travelers mock them and laugh at them and say, what's going on here with the donkey? And the and, uh, father is kind of frustrated and doesn't know what to do. And they end up carrying the donkey. So they rig up a way to carry the donkey. And now the the father and the son are carrying the donkey to even more ridicule. And the donkey manages to get loose and gets away. So the moral of the story is, by trying to please everybody, he had pleased nobody and lost his ass besides. So... You can cause yourself a lot of unnecessary grief by trying to please everybody. And when you do that, you usually find out that they're not really affected one way or the other. You try to please everybody and nobody is pleased. Please yourself, and at least you'll be pleased. I've discovered uh, this lesson with uh, these videos. Not everyone is going to like my videos. But while I can take requests and listen to feedback, possibly take everyone's advice at once and make every little change being asked for. I have to be myself. And these videos will be what they are. And hopefully some people may like them. Some people won't like them, and that's okay. The Oregon Trail Rendezvous Country. Places to visit include the Oregon Trail, Fort Casper, Fort Laramie, Independence Rock, which is a really cool place. Maybe some more pictures of that in here. 
So you can save yourself a lot of grief by admitting to the futility of trying to please everybody. Because most of the time, people just can't be pleased. There's a picture of the iron rim wheels of thousands of, it says, the iron rimmed wheels of thousands of immigrant wagons carved these deep tracks at Oregon Trail Ruts historic site near Guernsey, Wyoming. I think that's how you say it, Guernsey. You may have some difficult people in your life. They may have personality issues or behavior issues, whatever it might be. And getting back to our serenity prayer, you, you can't change them. And they probably won't change on their own or won't change the way you want them to. And in some cases, you can stay away from those kinds of people and eliminate them from your life. But sometimes you can't. In that case, we need to learn from both the serenity prayer and the miller and the donkey story. No, nothing we'll do, we do, will we'll please these people. But also, we can't change them. They are who they are. And we, we have to accept that. That doesn't mean that we have to like it. Or support it. We are not endorsing their bad behavior or the, the bad situation it just means that you can't change it and there may still be grief but there will be less grief than if we continue to struggle against it by, by struggling against the situation we can't change, we create undue suffering. You're not supporting it. Rather, you're, you're choosing to accept it. Not fight it. try to change it. I remember this uh, Oregon Trail marker. It's a little, it's a short hike from a dirt road. I think this marker marks the South Pass. Yeah, that's what it says here. So, um,
the, the South Pass is a very gradual pass. You you almost don't even know when you're crossing it. That's how gradual it is. Anyway, you're uh, giving yourself permission to, to feel how you feel. You, you know the pain might still be there. Some of the suffering will be alleviated. If you can do this, you will experience more peace and a small measure of serenity. That is not to say that it is easy. Acceptance is a active process. You have to continually remind yourself that you can't change it. You recognize that it will just make you more miserable to not accept it not make space for it. It doesn't mean it's perfect or, or that you've given up. It just means you recognize the situation that you cannot change things that are out of your control. Accepting it is the best option. For your mental health and toward alleviating anxiety and grief. And, uh, some photos of the geology of Wyoming We've got Yellowstone and some of the rock formations in the state. So we're just about done with this book with this video. What I'll say in closing is be kind to yourself. Be patient with yourself. We've all been through a lot past few years. If you're getting behind on your chores or home improvements or whatever it might be, give yourself a break. Bullying yourself doesn't help anything.
Thanks for watching. I'll uh, see you soon. Take care.